kind of leads me on to the next question that I had in mind for you about the strategic income fund is where would it fit in a, a client's portfolio? How would they use it uh, within their portfolio? Yeah, so I think um, the strategic income fund is certainly on the defensive or income side of the customer balance sheet. Um, when you think growth and defensive or growth and income, um, both both terms seem to be used in the industry. Um, the But that's probably not news to anyone, um, right? If they've been listening till till now, the um, the part of the um, portfolio this suits for us is is like I think I think the best way to put it is strategic cash, um, the money that you want to that, that that you believe is appropriately strategically sit, sitting there, liquid, um, ready for something, um, um, but has I guess a bit of term to it. Um, so I'm not talking about the cash that you know for uh, someone who's retired who's you know, got a pension payment next week and the week after. That should be in that should be in a cash account, and, and you know, obviously paying nothing at the moment in terms of returns. But um, I'm more talking about the uh, part of your strategic asset allocation that you're allocating to cash, but f- frequently you're not using. Um, that's the part of the portfolio that this product um, really helps with. You know, we've had uh, we spend so much time on liquidity management. Um, we make sure we invest in assets that um, are going to pay a nice return premium um, but are not going to take the pain when equities sell off um, because hopefully um, for, 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 for those out there managing money, um, they do have the ability to call on some of that liquidity uh, when you know equities are in a bad way um, or other growth assets are in a bad way because that's a, that's a really good strategy to uh, call on your, your liquidity and and buy risk uh, when when th- when things look look pretty sour because um, obviously it can add returns um, but but that's probably the short version of um, the part of the portfolio it fits because that return premium is is nice and juicy uh, over over cash um, and and really you you're adding such an immaterial amount of um, uh, capital volatility uh, in the context of the portfolio so just to summarize you we, we've sort of touched on it a couple of times through you're targeting uh, a return of one percent above the bank bill rate by investing in a highly liquid high quality portfolio of credit assets uh, predominantly floating rate notes asset-backed securities corporate debt and some term deposits and cash yeah, yeah. So we do have a material amount actually in money market and term deposits, and obviously they're not high returning and not much of an exciting part to talk about in in terms of this kind of conversation. But um, yeah, we we're very focused on half the portfolio or more being uh, liquid over sort of a, um, a pretty short time frame, uh, and and we've even done some stress testing. We're looking at forty five to fifty percent of the portfolio liquid over three months, even in sort of a GFC kind of liquidity conditions, which is a lot more than we're going to, to need to meet redemptions. Um, and so there are there are money market t- deposit accounts and, and even term deposits in, in, the, in the portfolio. Um, yeah, but, uh, but, but um, uh, the investment in floating rate notes as well is um, uh, reasonably um, defensive. Um, from a from a credit risk and sort of mark to market kind of pers- perspective. This podcast is for informational purposes only. It does not constitute financial advice or take into account the particular investment objectives, financial situations, or needs of individual listeners. Listeners should consider whether any opinions or recommendations in this podcast are suitable for their particular circumstances, and if appropriate seek professional advice, including tax advice.